Good evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting of the Ottawa Carleton District School Board to order and acknowledge that we meet tonight from many locations in the traditional unceded and unsurrendered territories of the Algonquin Nation. I would like to thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us on their land and reaffirm our commitment to proceeding on a path towards reconciliation. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Trustee Blackburn, seconded by Trustee Huff, thank you. All those in favor of the agenda as presented? And those opposed? And the motion to approve the agenda is carried. Moving on, the next item on our agenda is delegations. And this evening, I'm pleased to welcome Charles Seagal regarding COVID-19 safety in schools. Um, I'm just looking to see that Mr. Seagal is present. For you, Madam Chair, it doesn't appear that uh, Mr. Seagal is here yet. If he is not here yet, uh, perhaps uh, with the agreement of the board, perhaps we can move on to the present the advisory committee presentation from the advisory committee on the arts because I see that uh, uh, Nancy Dean is present. And then if uh, our delegation has arrived, uh, we can hear the delegation following. If, if there's any disagreement with that, please raise your hand. And seeing no disagreement on that, I would like to say welcome very much to Nancy Solange Dean, uh, Chair of the Advisory Committee on the Arts. Uh, we're anticipating a great presentation for about 10 minutes after which there may be some questions from trustees. So thank you for being here tonight. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for having me um, again. Uh, my name is Nancy Solange and I am the chair of the Arts Advisory Committee. And just before I start with the presentation, I just um, want to let you know uh, that hopefully today is a, an opportunity for us to reconnect. It's been a little while since we've um, had an opportunity to to um, chat back and forth and have this opportunity to interact together. So I thank you for that opportunity. And on behalf of the count of the committee, I also would like to do my best to um, represent them. Um, we have uh, a wonderful larger committee this year. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and also just to start off, I thought I'd do a, a little bit of an interactive uh, piece. And first of all is um, just to sort of get on the same page about how we all feel about the beauty and the magic and what is the arts in general and for us the arts is of course all forms of art it is dance it is drama it is music it is visual arts it is literary it is everything that is creative so i was uh walking by and i found this particular um it's a <laughs> a magnet and i'm not sure if you can see it very well because i'm not on the screen but it says art and then it has a, a bunch of verbs of what art does is uh, can be so in your uh, if you can in your reactions if you can either give me a little heart or a little thumbs up if you agree with some of these statements art helps thank you i see some hearts <laughs> art heals art relaxes Art supports. Art speaks. And art is a voice. So to begin, I thank you for that. <laughs> so to begin with the Arts Advisory Committee, I wanted again to just give you a um, reconnect and to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing and, and who, who we are this year. So if we can turn to the next slide. 
Our mandate for those um, that uh, may not know of us too much is we're an independent advisory committee and we're really, really just looking at, at arts in general um, and the programming and trying to really strive for a vibrant arts program in, in the Ottawa Carleton District School Board. We support and encourage arts education for all students across the OCDSB and we also try and be a bit of a liaison with the community as well. So different art institutions institutions, the NAC, for example, and um, MASC is part of our group, also uh, local organizations um, and um, post-secondary community, as well as some other uh, parent um, caregivers, as well as students. The next slide, please. We've been really fortunate this year. Um, again, we have a uh, returning Kristen, Kristen from our, as a principals from Program and Learning. Um, we also uh, bid Goodbye to Wendy Huff, and I wanted to just uh, publicly say thank you for all the support in the past we have had from you, and also really appreciate um, having you. And want to thank also Donna Blackburn for being our trustee and uh, helping us along the way as well. We have our beautiful arts coaches. There's intermediate uh, as well, and we're in. We're endeavoring. We're going to have a, an elementary representative as well. Um, we've increased this year. Um, We've included the Canterbury High School um, as, as a rep as well, and also NAC, which is the Nas um, National Arts Centre and MASC. We also had a student join us this year, which is really a wonderful experience. And also we've added school council art reps to really be that connection to the school and to be a conduit for, for information going to and fro and, and a way for us to be a little bit more on the, on the ground in the sense to see what's happening and um, what people are looking for in, in terms of the support from the committee. The next slide. So I wanted to share with you what we've sort of been discussing throughout the, the time here. And um, first of all, is how COVID has impacted the arts has been a, a huge priority in terms of talking about what people are interested in. And the main issues about how COVID, how COVID has impacted. And it's been, uh, as you know, an incredible variety. In some cases, we've had an opportunity to reinvent and re redo things in a different way. And in another way, it's really impacted performance-based arts, as you know, across the world has been impacted by COVID. And it also has been reached here at the district. So one of the things is looking at how to mitigate and really increase the arts experiences that we have at the OCDSB. So what we've really been discussing is how to increase these arts experiences and also how to support and improve arts informed pedagogy across all curriculum um, space, all curriculum. We've also discussed that it's really important with the, with the disengagement that has happened in being not in person for so long. And in when we are in person with some of the restrictions, that the idea of celebrating the, together and being and using art and this, and having arts be a space and time, making sure we are prioritizing the space and time for us to be able to do to have arts experiences. The next slide. So part of that is also about um, how equity in the arts. Next month we are going to be having the chair of the art. Uh, Equity, the advisory committee on equity and specifically to, to start that discussion. We also have been discussing about voices, how to engage more people in, and inclusiveness as well. We also have been discussing the, the heart <laughs> is, our, is who provides those experiences and helps facilitate um, to our students and those are our teachers. Some of them are specialty and some of them are not, but all of them need support to provide that experience. With the COVID restrictions and the, and the impact on performance space specifically, we're also very concerned about the engagement and the enrollment that the sort of the trickle effect of that's gonna be happening throughout the next couple of years um, with the students that have not had as many experiences or different types of experiences, what that's gonna mean for engagement and enrollment as as the years as they go through the school system up until high school and where they can actually choose the different courses that are arts based. The next slide. So part of what we want to share with you and re read, I guess, um, 
implore with you again is to really prioritize the arts and prioritizing in particular how we support the arts is by prioritizing the arts experiences. Quality arts programs in schools is really essential, as you know, for well being, for um, academic performance, um, for all around well being. So please, wherever you can, in whatever capacity, to please prioritize quality arts experiences. Prioritizing the conditions for creativity. We have been doing such a great job at the OCDSB um, with asset based approach, and that the arts is one of the major ways in order to achieve asset base and showing the strengths of each individual in their own terms, in their own way, in their own voice. Also provide resources. That's including some of the funds that we've had. We've had Mike Carson come to us and he explained to us a little bit further about what, what specific value money is. Um, but of course you, the OCDSB supports both in staffing, in spaces, and in other curriculum supports as well. So again, anywhere that you can, please prioritize arts. And the last slide basically is um, just some of the goals. We're really trying to increase um, uh, the accountability in the arts as well as part of supporting the Indigenous Equity and Human Roadmap. So, we're hoping to do a lot more in this area and also create an online presence next year. We didn't get quite that to this year, but we did increase the representation in our in our committee and we're really excited about that. And the last slide is just basically if you ever have any questions, want to hear more about what is happening um, and how we can perhaps um, give you any what's going on in the schools and what community is thinking, please arts advisory at OCDSB that Gmail is us. And that is pretty much it. <laughs> I'm not sure if you have any questions, please. Kristen, is that good? <laughs> Excellent, Nancy. <laughs> it's a lot. Thank you very much for, for that presentation, Nancy. Uh, we we uh, might want to to find a prize for creativity and also a prize for timing because <laughs> you were exceptionally efficient with your words uh do we have any questions for for nancy about the work of the arts advisory committee trustee bill thank you so much uh for your presentation and uh for reminding us of the importance uh, of, of the work of the heart. Um, I'm wondering when it comes to concrete uh, proposals uh, to increase access to the arts within schools, what sort of, um, what sort of things have been on the mind of, of the committee? And if you could share uh, some of those more concrete examples of, of what can be be done to uh, bring access uh, to the school, that would be great. Thank you for that question. Um, there are so many different ways and so many different things. And right now with the fact that um, everything is so still up in the air and restrictions and, and things like that, it's been difficult to give you a specific exactly what, it, what you're going to need to do because everything keeps changing, um, as you know. Um, however, we have always, always, um, um, been talking about the need for um, art spaces and, and ensuring that every school has a particular place to and particular um, resources to have and create those arts experiences. Um, again, specifically what's happening now financially, we have had Mike Carson come and explain to us, there is a budget that is um, coming forth and every year, the school gets, um, each school gets a particular amount for materials. We've asked specifically for that to be done a little bit earlier um, because it's coming later on. And so we're hoping that that is gonna be coming earlier and basically just allowing each, everybody to use it with a little bit more time and can plan their time. So that's something that we've been able to do specifically. Um, outside of that, we're in the process of figuring out a bit more concreteness in terms of what we can what we can suggest as well. 
Are there any other questions for, for, for Nancy this evening? And I can only assume that the presentation was so thorough that people don't need need to ask a lot more questions. Uh, that was really appreciated. And I hope that uh, more trustees will be able from time to time to stop in and attend meetings of the Arts Advisory Committee. Uh, in the past, we've certainly had more than just the, the uh, trustee who volunteered to be on, to serve, serve as part of the committee, uh, attend from time to time. And I hope that other trustees will take advantage of those opportunities. Thank you so much for your work as chair and to the whole committee for all of their work during this year. Thank you very much. Moving on then, um, has our uh, delegation arrived yet? Do you chair? No, he has not. In that case, uh, we should move on then with our agenda and I uh, will go to Vice Chair Penny for a report from board in camera. Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, board met in camera this evening and there were no recommendations to put forward today. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that brings us to, the, to, to my briefing as chair and I'm always happy to share a piece of good news, uh, particularly that last Thursday, the Ontario government announced it will be committing over $19.2 million to fund the construction of a new OCDSB elementary school with childcare in Ottawa's Findlay Creek community. The new school will serve 674 students from kindergarten to grade eight. And the site will also include a child care component with 39 spaces for toddler and preschool aged children. We would like to thank the Ontario government for committing to this important project. And in addition, we would like to acknowledge and thank the many parents, students, trustees and community members who devoted a lot of energy to advocating for this school. Second item I'd like to note is that Monday, the 2nd of May, is the opening day of the nomination period for school board trustee candidates for the municipal election to be held on the 24th of October. And I would note that information is available on the OCDSB website about the uh, trustee elections, role of trustee and so on for anyone who is interested. The nomination period to register as a candidate runs until Friday, August the 19th, and candidates must file their nominations through the City of Ottawa Elections Office. More information about the election process, who can be a candidate, and, and the process itself for, be, for, for being nominated can, can be found on the City of Ottawa's elections website as well. Moving on, the last item is that with the end of Ramadan fast approaching, I would like on behalf of the board to wish a blessed, blessed Eid to all in our, our community who are celebrating next week. Are there any questions uh, on my briefing this evening? Trustee Jenkins. Uh, thank you, Chair Scott. I just also wanted to congratulate the community of Finley Creek for the funding announcement for the building of the uh, new elementary school. I know parents are quite relieved. And so I just also wanted to share my delight and uh, uh, appreciation to the community. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Jenkins. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, uh, that brings us to the director's briefing. Madam Director. Thank you, uh, through you, Chair. Uh, last week, we shared information with families and staff about some changes to our approach to social media. Uh, we appreciate the communications value of social media, but we are concerned about the increased use of social media for bullying, intimidation, and hate. 
As a learning organization, we have a responsibility to curate a safe and respectful online community for students as, parent, as well as parents, staff, and the broader public. Uh, from information on some of the steps we're taking, um, we invite the public to uh, look uh, on our website uh, for that information. Uh, we also encourage members of the OCDSB uh, community to join us in the efforts that we're undertaking to make uh, a safer environment uh, through social media platforms. As we continue to navigate challenges due to staffing shortages, uh, we're seeing some impacts on the operations of the extended day program. Uh, the program will not be running uh, in 10 schools for morning and afternoon from Monday, May 2nd through Wednesday, May 4th. Uh, more information has been sent to those families and communities who are directly impacted. Uh, this service will resume on Thursday, May the 5th. On, uh, the Ministry of Education has approved uh, our school year calendar for next year. Uh, the full calendar will be uh, will soon be available on our website, and some key dates uh, were shared in our recent messages to parents, students, and staff. Uh, and that's all for my update, Chair. Thank you, Director. Uh, do we have any questions for the Director? And I'm seeing none. Um, so I will go right back to you for an update regarding COVID-19. Thank you through you, Chair, and I'll turn to Associate Director Reynolds with that update. Uh, thank you and through you, Chair, very briefly. Although we do consider to see some uh, operational impacts and uh, difficulties finding or securing adequate replacement staff, uh, since the long weekend, we have seen a bit of an improvement than what we had before. Um, in the, the weeks leading up to the, uh, the Easter break, uh, the long weekend, we had... Uh, you know, routinely days where we were seeing uh, more than 10, upwards of 15 uh, classes closed. Uh, since then, uh, we've generally seen those numbers drop to below 10, uh, with the exception of last Friday. So uh, some some improvement on, on that front, uh, just thought I'd uh, pass it along. Are there any questions? Trustee Jenkins? Uh, thank you, Chair Scott. Um... My question is, what is the board's policy for uh, when students or staff, um, when they return from isolating for five days, um, do they have to uh, show a negative uh, test um, before they are officially, before they officially return to school? Uh, through you, Chair, no, they do not. Uh, the system works on, uh, you know, members of the public, parents, students, staff, um, you know, following the advice in the screener and uh, acting appropriately. Uh, there is no requirement through any of the, uh, the provincial or local um, health officers to uh, enforce or, or seek to enforce uh, any of those recommendations that uh, an individual may have as a result of their own personal exposure or what they would see in the in the daily screener, nor are they obliged to disclose that they have possibly been infected or have been self-isolating or the reasons why. So uh, that's a long answer. Short answer is no. All right. Thank you. That's all. Are there any other questions with regard to the COVID update? And I'm seeing none. Uh, so that brings us to uh, our first action item this evening, which is confirmation of board minutes. Uh, first, uh, with regard to the board minutes from the 29th of March, 2022, uh, do we have a mover to confirm those minutes? Trustee Blackburn, seconded by Trustee Lyra. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? If I may speak from the chair, I did have a question regarding the last item that, um, that we were dealing with that evening, which was the approval of the safe schools policies. Where will the record of that uh, debate up to that point appear? 
Uh, I was expecting to see it in this set of minutes, but it's not here. And so, so where will the record of what we uh, debated uh, on the uh, 29th of March uh, show up in minutes? Through you, Chair, I'll turn the question to the Executive Officer. Uh, Executive Officer Giroux, please. Kind of an unusual situation because the um, uh, discussion didn't finish, but the um, uh, minutes, uh, but the meeting concluded it wasn't a continuation meeting. So um, we will capture, uh, I'll, I'll go back with the manager of board services and um, we'll uh, confirm what the final location is for documenting that, but we will also make certain that there's a notation on the minutes so that a reader of those minutes is referred to the appropriate um, location so we can follow the trail. If I may ask a follow up then, uh, I guess what I'm wondering is whether it, it, it makes sense to try to confirm these minutes now since there is potentially a significant part of the meeting that was not that is not minuted here or and and whether it would be better to sort out the issues of how the minutes are going to be managed and bring it, bring this set of minutes back to the next board meeting for confirmation. If that's a preference of the board, we're happy to do that, Madam Chair. So we do have a motion to confirm the uh, minutes on the floor. We can vote for it or we can vote against it. If we vote against it, then, then uh, they will be brought back to the next meeting, potentially with the additional uh, record of the uh, debate that was held on that date regarding the safe schools policies. So I will ask, uh, on, on the uh, motion that is already on the floor to confirm the minutes from the 29th of March. All those in favor? And those opposed? I'm sorry, I'm seeing a whole lot of hands that just shot up. Let's try that again and I'll give a little more time for those in favor. Those in favor then, please. And those opposed, please. And by my count, we have four in favor, five opposed. So the motion to confirm these minutes tonight fails and they will come back to the uh, May board meeting. Moving on then to the next set of minutes um, from the 12th of April, 2022. This was our special board meeting. Uh, and um, do we have a mover for, for those minutes? Trustee Boothby, thank you. Seconded by Trustee Ellis. Are there any errors or omissions in this set of minutes? Trustee Bell. Thank you very much and through you, Chair. Um, on uh, page three of the minutes, it notes in response to a query from Trustee Bell regarding the impact that mask mandates would have on students. I would kindly like for it to be clarified um, to note uh, in response to a query from Trustee Bell regarding the impact on the mental health, the health and well being of students um, of having uh, uh, removed and then reinitiated um, uh, the mask mandates. Thanks. It is clearly articulated in, in the recording. Thank you, Trustee Bell. Are there any other errors or omissions? And seeing none, I will call the question on the motion to confirm the minutes from the 12th of, a 12th of April. Um, as, as amended, all those in favor? And opposed?
and the minutes from the 12th of April are confirmed. Thank you. Moving on then to the next item, is there any business arising from, from the board minutes at this point? Seeing none, we will move then on to unfinished business from the 29th of March, 2022 meeting, um, which is the item regarding approval of the safe schools policies. And you will see in your package that we have, that we have, um, oh, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong, the wrong page here, that we have a memorandum from staff. And perhaps just to make sure we're all clear uh, in terms of our process here, I will ask if staff could please, could please outline just, just exactly what we need to do by way of our process. Thank you, uh, Chair Scott. I will ask Executive Officer Giroux uh, to walk us through um, what those steps are for the board. Over to you, Executive Officer. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, there was a memo uh, outlining the process that was shared with trustees, um, and you'll recall that um, we had considerable debate. We're recommending that you um, continue uh, the discussion. Um, uh, I am not certain uh, that a speaker's list was maintained. Uh, if you have a speaker's list, you might continue from there. Um, if not, uh, you may start a speaker's list. But um, I think we should treat this as though um, we are uh, continuing the conversation that happened so that um, we're using our time well. If I am not mistaken, at the time of uh, adjournment, there was an amendment on the floor that was uh, moved by Trustee Schwartz. Uh, Trustee Schwartz is absent tonight. And so we would require a, a substitute mover um in order to continue that debate or um else uh that motion would um uh, come off the floor thank you and i note that in the memorandum we do have the opportunity there is there there was no additional speakers list from the previous debate and since this is unfinished business but it is a new board meeting i expect that that means that all trustees if they really need to will be able to to speak to the motion and that it will be introduced again by trustee boothby as the substitute mover trustee blackburn did you have a question yes uh miss Madam Chair, thank you and through you. Uh, I am prepared to uh, move Trustee Schwartz's uh, amendment in substitution. And do we have the language of that amendment handy? Through you, Chair, it will take me a moment to find that. That's fine. So, so since we haven't haven't uh, got gone into the debate on this yet, uh, if you wish to move that as an amendment when it's your turn to speak on the on the motion, Trustee Blackburn, you certainly may do that. Okay, but can are we going to get it on the screen? We'll have we'll have it on the screen by the time we get there. I expect. Okay. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so so. Um, Go, going then first to Trustee Booth, Boothby for for any introduction to this this motion. Uh, thank you, Chair. So we've had a lot of discussion over a lot of meetings on these three policies, and I believe what we're down to is the last motion that Trustee Schwartz uh, introduced before we uh, ended the meeting at eleven o'clock. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with introduction because we've all been at these meetings. We've done a lot of looking at these amendments and we've made a fair bit of amendments. Staff has cleaned up all the policies in accordance with the past amendments that we have made. And I would just um, urge us to get these passed because it's been quite a while and staff really needs these in their hands so they can start putting the procedures together and we can move forward so that we have some cohesive 
um, policies that are all working together and um, have been consolidated. So I'll leave it there and let the rest of the meeting continue. Thanks. Thank you. And I will just confirm with Trustee Penny that he is indeed still seconding this. That is correct, Manager. Chair, could Thanks. I just add one more thing? And I, and I guess I'll have to have the advice of how I might do this. Um, so in the uh, memo that uh, Manager Giroux uh, referred us to that we got on Friday, um, we're asking just so we can wrap up also policy 147.gov, the human rights policy. And we did make a substantive change to the definition of sexual or gender-based harassment. Um, so I'd like to move that a new part C of this motion would read that the definition of sexual or gender-based harassment in policy P147.gov human rights be revised to duplicate the definition that we inserted in P125.SCO school district code of conduct be added to the recommendation. Is that in order now or do I have to wait for that later? That is in order now, but we do need a seconder for the amendment. Do we have a seconder? Trustee Blackburn will second that. And the, the other question that I will ask is whether this amendment is friendly. If it is not friendly, please raise your hand. And I'm not seeing any hands raised and therefore I will uh, declare that this is a friendly amendment and it will be incorporated into the uh, motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Trustee Boothby. Uh, are there speakers to, to, to the uh, motion then? I think we will go first to Trustee Blackburn. Trustee Blackburn. Madam Chair, I, I apologize. So this goes back to um, the notion and uh, that we not put a very, very, very prescriptive, specific time limit on how quickly uh, a, a complaint would be dealt with. As we've heard from our very experienced human rights, a uh, human um, resources superintendent. Uh, these things do take time. We as a board need to ensure that these things are done properly because if they're not done properly, we set ourselves up for litigation because you know people's uh, reputations um, can be severely damaged for instance. So we need to make sure that whoever's doing the investigation has the time needed to conduct the investigation appropriately. And this is uh, a policy. It's not a procedure. And, you know, so I think that this is what uh, we should go with. And again, since it has been a while, uh, my colleagues that we've, we have met, I would like um, uh, the staff position um, to be spoken out, out aloud again, please. Thank you. Before we go to staff for that, I think we need a seconder for this, this amendment. Uh, and uh, so I will ask if there is a seconder for this amendment. Trustee Jenkins will second it. Uh, so now I will go to staff for comment. Thank you, uh, through you, Chair. Uh, and so I believe the comment that is being requested is to um, just understand um, the um, perspective on the timelines that are being recommended. Uh, just for clarification, Trustee Blackburn. Uh, can you hear me, Madam Director? Yes. Sorry, it's without the screen. Yeah, so there was an amendment that a very specific number, I, I, if my memory days. serves me right, that the number 20 days mm -hmm. was suggested. And what I'm, and what I heard from staff, and again, 
was that that is not typically in, a, in an investigation of these natures, very sensitive natures, enough time to conduct it properly. And I, what I, and the other thing I, I'm saying is that I trust that staff will do, take these matters seriously and that they will make every effort to make sure that they are uh, conducted in the manner that the original text said. Thank you uh, through you, Chair. So I be believe that I had turned to uh, Superintendent McCoy um, as um, uh, a part of the human, uh, human resources team. Um, uh, it's a responsibility of the human resources team to conduct investigations and albeit those investigations are um, uh, focused on um, staff, um, the principles around investigation still apply. Uh, so I'll ask uh, Superintendent McCoy if she would care to comment on the notion of the 20 day timeline uh, for um, such investigations from the time of receipt. Sure. Uh, thank you, Director, and uh, through you, Chair. Um, and I'm trying to think back in terms of what the specific um, language was, but I do recall the 20 days. And um, I think what we're looking at here is the, um, the amendment to remove that. Um, um, as um, a trustee Blackburn indicated, uh, my previous comments were around the fact that uh, the time frame for um, responding to and addressing these matters can um, vary depending on a whole number of factors, including the uh, complexity of the matters being brought forward, as well as the availability of the parties who are involved in the investigation. In some cases, the parties are not readily available um, to cooperate for different reasons. For example, if an employee is absent due to a medical reason, uh, that can um, significantly delay the, uh, the investigative process. I think what I will say is that the, um, the language that is uh, currently uh, being debated uh, does reflect, as the director indicated, um, the approach that staff would take, and that is that we um, address these things in a, a timely and serious matter, uh, recognizing that they are, um, um, you know, matters that um, that are difficult for all parties who are involved, and certainly want to bring resolution to them as uh, as quickly as possible. Um, but again, there are occasions when that um, is um, uh, uh, delayed uh, for reasons beyond our control. So. It, uh, it really does vary in terms of the time frame, um, but what we would be looking at is um, putting more detailed processes into a uh, procedure that accompanies the, um, the policy and we'll be looking at the procedures based on what the um, changes have been to, uh, to this policy once it's approved. Anything further, Trustee Blackburn? You're muted. I'll keep forgetting to unplug my speakers. Um, I would also remind my colleagues that, you know, these aren't, this isn't an, like a judicial process. Like you can't force somebody who's involved to talk to us or whoever is conducting the investigation on X day because they're, they're under the, you know, pressure of the 20 days. So you, you have to wait, you know, when the person makes themselves available. So again, this, this is a policy and, and adding a number is just, it, it's, it goes beyond our scope, it's too procedural. And I, I would also encourage my colleagues to once again, um, pay close attention to what our very experienced staff have had to say about this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Blackburn. On the amendment, Trustee Lyra, and I note for anyone speaking to the amendment, we're on three minutes for time. Can we get the text that we're currently trying to delete on screen? Because I think people have forgotten that it says, should this timeline not be possible, then all relevant parties shall be notified regularly on the progress of the complaint. It has a built-in escape clause if for some reason, whether it be medical or any other reason, that we cannot have this complete within 20 days, but it sets an expectation that we are going to have these resolved within 20 days, because I don't want things to carry on for weeks or months unnecessarily. And I'm certain that nobody around this table would intentionally drag things out because they don't want to deal with them. But I can envision a scenario where that happens, where somebody doesn't want to deal with an uncomfortable scenario and just sort of 
pushes it off because that person's only a year from retirement. And if we just drag this process out, it'll, it'll go away. And so I would like, I think it, this policy is better with a specific number of days. Further, when we had our professional development on policy, we heard multiple times from our facilitators that the public looks to policy. And if you have a 20 day number in there, then members of the public who look at this and say, I submitted a complaint a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's appropriate to escalate. I don't know if it's appropriate to follow up. And we've heard this argument before because it has been, we've discussed this a number of times, but we do gain something by having it in there. And one of the things and I believe it was A.D. Reynolds um, uh, spoke to this, said that this is currently in its form unamended still enforceable it's still operational and so i think that this is a better version than the other version and i will be voting against this amendment i would encourage all of my colleagues to do so because like i said i think having regular notification of the parties is important and having a specific number of days is important thank you thank you and and um I don't know whether staff are easily able to pull out the existing wording for that particular section for anyone who is looking at the uh, policy attached, the, the um, policy P.125. Okay, we've got it. We've got it on the screen now so everyone can see. So with that, with, with that um, I will go next on the amendment to Trustee Campbell. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, generally speaking, as uh, repeating a bit, uh, I don't like uh, uh, set numbers of uh, days in policy. Uh, I have a different vision of policy. Uh, I don't think we should be directing uh, readers to get their uh, procedural information from our policy if they're interested in what the procedures say. Um, <clears throat> and I think we can be clear about how we uh, direct the public here. So I don't really buy that argument, um, uh, but I don't really buy some of the arguments of the mover, I have to say as well. Um, what it comes down to me is I think, um, uh, I don't like uh, specific numbers of days uh, in policy. I, I admire the intent, not against the intent. Um, uh, I'd like to see uh, alternate wording. I can't think of anything offhand. Um, with, I believe, Trustee Bell's amendment, uh, which inserted the words aim to be resolved within, um, this now is, is loose enough that um, it really is um, aspirational or notional. And so a lot of the, the sting for me of putting in a specific number of days is, is removed. Um, I still grumble about it, <laughs> but uh, not enough that um, I'm willing to vote uh, uh, against it, I think. Uh, but I will be abstaining. I'm not really in favor of that. Uh, so that, that, that will be an a indication of my general displeasure with putting numbers of days in policies. And uh, going forward, uh, I would look for us uh, not to repeat uh, if we can avoid it. Thank you. Are there any other speakers to the amendment? And Trustee Campbell, your hand is still up. Trustee Penny. Uh, Madam Chair, it's, uh, I recognize that this is the policy. However, uh, I am not exactly clear on what the amendment is. Uh, is the amendment uh, this whole statement? Uh, I'm sorry for my, um, short memory. So if, if that could be clarified. Chair, I think now there's a lot of confusion. Trustee Blackburn, Trustee Blackburn, I will deal with this. Okay, thank you. So, so we have on our screen two, two things. At the bottom um, is the current wording in the, in the policy, which makes reference to allegations being acknowledged immediately aimed to be resolved within a maximum of 20 school days. Uh, Above it is the okay. proposed amendment, which would take that reference to the 20 days out. Okay, thank you very much. And I do appreciate it and apologize to my colleagues for being so dense, sorry. 
And did you uh, did you wish to speak to the amendment? Uh, not really. I am. I'm sort of with Trustee Campbell on this one. That's about. It. Thank you, Trustee Trustee Penny. Are there any other speakers to the amendment? And I'm not seeing any other hands raised, so I will. Oh, Trustee Bell, you wish to speak to the amendment. Thank you, and through you, Chair. I think uh, when the revision was originally, well, I know that when the uh, original revision was brought forth, it was brought forth on behalf um, and reflecting what I had heard from some of our ACE committee members regarding the issue of accountability. I am, however, uh, swayed uh, by the argument that a specific number of days um, may be taking it a step too far. And so I believe what I have heard uh, from um, Superintendent McCoy is that um, that type of detail would be included within a, a procedure. And my hope, um, if uh, the motion put forth by Trustee Schwartz and, and Blackburn, if, if it does pass, is that um, more specifics will be able to be found in the procedure because that will give um, the, the members that I, that I listened to at ACE and other, others um, who have actually had to go, go through these experiences, the assurance that there is some sort of, of time frame that we are aiming for. So with that, um, I will not be um, supporting the motion put forth by Trustee Blackburn and Schwartz, um, but I hope my hope is that uh, in the procedure, that detail that I believe is required to um, demonstrate accountability to our community is, is put forth. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bell. Um, just, just to confirm uh, that, um, I will ask the director if she wished to make a comment. Uh, thank you through you, Chair. I just wanted to clarify for trustees' consideration as well, um, uh, the impact of uh, adhering uh, or putting a 20-day a 20 um, limitation within the policy uh, that if in fact there are challenges to wrapping up uh, the investigation within that time, um, that it may actually force a situation where um, the investigation is prematurely concluded um, if certain voices are not able to be reached. Uh, it may also um, put, uh, if, if they're not, if we're not able to conclude um, an investigation in the time frame that is allocated, it may, it may put the investigation in jeopardy. Um, so meaning that if there is an outcome, a possible outcome to that, um, to an investigation that does not um, adhere to that timeline in the policy can be challenged on that technicality uh, and therefore uh, impede um, um, a, a, a just outcome, if you will. So I just wanted to um, to add that uh, to your consideration, um, that there is a potential impact on outcome, uh, even if compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, I will move on to Trustee Fisher on the amendment. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. And I guess the, 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 the Director raises an interesting point. And I guess the question, the first question that I have for the Director and, and I guess for the Superintendent of HR is if there is to be, you know, a benchmark put in policy or put in procedure, the benchmark is still there. Um, and so there's still uh, potentially, no matter where it is, an issue in terms of uh, adherence and compliance, even though I think the original uh, wording to Trustee Lyra's point does give some flexibility and an opportunity for justification to go beyond the 20 days. So I guess, can, can the director just further explain why... Um, you know, I guess if the issue, if if there's a if there's a if there's a benchmark number in the policy, 
or not in the policy and put in the procedure, there are still issues in terms of administrative compliance, right? So what I, I guess what I'm hearing is the director saying they don't want a number at all. Is that true? So uh, yes, that would be true. Uh, and um, what I will do is I will turn it to uh, uh, Superintendent McCoy. I did have uh, some messaging back from both uh, our human rights uh, uh, advisor as well as the um, as well as uh, Superintendent McCoy, both of whom uh, engage in investigations. It's less about the compliance and more about the um, potential impact on outcome. Um, but I will turn to uh, Superintendent McCoy for comment. Thank you, Director, and, uh, and through you, Chair. So um, a couple of uh, potential outcomes in terms of having a, um, a number um, in the policy. The first, I guess, is that, um, as I indicated earlier, there are so many circumstances where it would, we would be unable to comply that we would be using the, um, the I think it was termed the escape clause or the out clause on, um, you know, on, a, on a fairly regular basis. And so to some extent, does it render the timeline um, meaningless if, if it's so difficult Difficult to uh, to meet it in so many cases. I guess the other the other concern would be that um, if there is um, a timeline, is there a risk either of um, uh, expediting an investigation in order to meet a timeline? So sacrificing the quality and the thoroughness of the investigation in order to meet um, that timeline. And again, we're talking here, I think, in the context of this policy and procedure about a whole range of investigations that may be covered. So both human resources investigations, as well as the human rights investigations and involving both staff and students. So it could be a whole number of things that it, that it applies to. Um, so that is um, a concern and I guess the other piece is whether or not the uh, the 20 days again becomes something that um, in the course of any litigation flowing from this could be raised as um, uh, you know in, in terms of it um, setting some kind of a, a standard. So uh, I guess as the director indicated, our preference would be not to have a specific um, timeline um, that in the course of the procedures that would apply to the different kinds of investigations. Um, we often, for example, set out timelines within which certain things need to be brought forward and can set out timelines in terms of acknowledging um, complaints and um, can, um, if we're looking at certain processes and again trying to articulate the uh, commitment to move these things forward um, can be careful in terms of, of choosing wording that um, establishes a, a clear and fair process that meets our administrative um, uh, duties, um, depending again on the, on the different contexts that we're talking about, whether it's employment, whether it's um, students, um, whether it's human resources, human rights, or you know other code of conduct kinds of issues. Okay, that's, that's helpful. I don't I don't see a timer, so I don't know. Oh, okay, minute fifty four. Um, so that that's really helpful, Janice, because I I, I am a full supporter of in, administrative rigor and fairness. Um, I guess the other side of my brain you know, after 13 years of practice, I do understand and appreciate the concerns from many that have had to go through some kind of an investigation that sometimes they can feel like they're just meandering and wandering and there's no, there's no beginning, there's no middle, there's no end. So I don't know where we put those benchmarks or those signals to say, we will make best efforts to do X, Y, and Z. But I do think there needs to be some kind of signaling to the system and to our parent community that when there is an issue, it's being taken seriously, and that throughout a process, there will be check-ins to let you know, you know, sort of where things are, how things stand, just so it doesn't feel like it's going into this, this big black hole, because I've certainly run into some situations where parents have felt that. So if it's not the policy, if it's not the procedure, I don't know where it is, but I do think we need to be sending those kind of signals to, to, uh, to the system, because I think um, people do feel like uh, they just get lost in the system. So... I don't know where you think the best place to put those issues are if it's not if it's not the procedure or the policy or wh wh where would it be in your opinion? Where do we send that signal? Do staff have a comment on that? Uh, so um, through you, Chair, I, I think, um, you know, there are some um, practice pieces that I think we need to be adopting in terms of best practice. I, I um, certainly agree with Trustee Fisher's comments that um, the, um, the timelines are um, a, 
you know, um, in many cases, much longer than anyone would want them to be. And again, based on a whole number of different circumstances, and I'm, I'm speaking to it from the, um, you know, from the uh, HR um, perspective only, but uh, often can take longer than um, certainly the, um, the complainants would like, and in many cases, even the respondents would like as well, um, uh, in, in terms of wrapping these things up. Um, I think um, what we can do, again, based on the conversation here, is, is look at the, um, the procedures, and as I said, depending on the context, um, uh, include uh, statements that talk about the regular kinds of updates without um, uh, tying our hands too much in terms of allowing the investigation to unfold the way it needs to, to ensure that it is fair and um, thorough and isn't um, cutting corners in order to meet or, or wrapping up too quickly um, in, in order to, uh, to meet um, a, a timeline. So I think we can do that both by a review of the, um, the procedures, but also in terms of our own practice around um, ensuring that the parties are, um, um, you know, contacted at least to provide an update. Again, the information they get may not be um, what they want to hear in terms of it's not done yet, but, um, but to uh, maintain that contact, that contact so that parties don't feel like they have been, um, you know, that they've cast this into sort of a black hole that, um, that um, then they don't hear from again. Okay, well, if we have, if I have that commitment, then I'm happy to support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Fisher. Trustee Ellis on the amendment. Um, thank you. I, you know, when you read the, um, I won't be supporting the amendment. I like the 20 days in there. And when you look at that 20 days, really the only pressure that that 20 day would put on this process would be the pressure of having to communicate with the participants or, or the people involved in the issue to be kept regularly informed as to the status of the investigation if it goes past 20 days. There's no huge um, hammer that falls on the heads of people if uh, 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 an issue can't be resolved in 20 days. All this says is if it goes beyond 20 days, it's incumbent on the board, on the district to keep the people informed so that they they so that they don't think it's gone into a black hole. I, I don't see all of the other reasons and, and concerns around this um, are still there, whether there's 20 days or not. Might there be pressure for someone to to wrap up an investigation? Yes, and it could be from a number of other things. It's it is not from this 20 day stipulation in our policy. And I think it's important to have this 20 days in there so that if it goes longer than that, the people who are involved in this process will be regularly updated where that is. For this reason, I won't be supporting the amendment and I hope uh, others will um, leave that 20 days, uh, support the 20 days that's currently in it. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ellis. Are there any other speakers to the amendment? And I, I'm only seeing a residual hand there, Trustee Ellis. So that brings me back to Trustee Blackburn for wrap up on the amendment. First, before I wrap up, Madam Chair, through you, I apologize to you for uh, interrupt the meeting when I ought not have. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, and I'd like to thank the director um, and uh, Superintendent McCoy for articulating far better than I um, did about my concerns about the, the way the policy is um, written. And my concern, and I'm concerned just as much as anybody at this table about justice for people. Um, and I've been through uh, processes myself, as everyone is well aware. And the point is, these are very complicated processes. And the point is that that mark of 20 days is a completely unrealistic expectation. So why would we ever set it up? Because it's gonna be hit one out of a hundred cases. It's just not going to happen. And so we call everybody 20 every 20 days and we say, 
well, we can't indicate who we've interviewed, what was said, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's against the fundamental, uh, and I'm not a lawyer, but I've studied the law. It's just against the fundamental basics of natural justice and the rule of law. So you, you can't do it. So I, in my opinion, it, I, I again, and I know that from time to time, my colleagues don't like when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I am going to go with the advice of our superintendent of human resources, who's a lawyer, who has been doing her job for 30 years. And I'm going to go with what the director of education, who has also been a superintendent of human resources at one point in her career. I believe I'm correct in that, Madam Director. Yes, I see you're nodding your head. So I am going to, as a trustee, who's very, very committed to justice, and I believe my position is the position that will more likely create the justice that I am committed to and that our director is committed to and that our uh, superintendent of human resources is committed to. And with that, I'll stop. Thank you, my colleagues. Thank you, Trustee Blackburn. I did see uh, Trustee Ellis's hand. We've concluded the debate. So unless it's a point of order or something. Yeah, it's a point of order. Uh, the Trustee Blackburn um, impugned um, knowing what's in our minds and that for some, and, and I forget exactly what it was. She claimed that she knew was in our minds. Um, I don't think she knows what's in our minds. She may want to um, clarify what she meant by that or withdraw knowing what's in our minds. Trustee Blackburn, would you yes. withdraw that, that part of your remarks? Yes, I'm very happy. So in past meetings, no, we, we don't need an explanation. All well, you need to do is, is indicate if you withdraw, if you withdraw the remarks relating to, to your comments on, on what you think other people are thinking. Uh, well, I'll just withdraw the remarks. I, I, it's no point in getting to this pettiness. Thank you. Uh, so that brings us then to the vote and um, I will ask people to raise their hands and to speak to 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 speak out their their vote and please try not to all speak at once so that I can actually keep an accurate count of the vote. So first of all, all those in favor of the amendment by Trustee Blackburn. Blackburn Jenna. in favor. Jennikins in favor. Boothby in favor. Huff in favor. Any in favor? Fisher in favor. Scott in favor. And those opposed to the amendment? Lyra opposed. Bella opposed. Ella opposed. Thank you. Uh, the amendment carries. Uh, my count is seven in favor and three opposed. So moving on with our debate, are there any other speakers to the main motion? And Trustee Lyra. I believe I have asked if that we vote on these things separately. Causes A, B, and C. Just let me go back and find find where our motion is. Madam Chair, can we share it on the screen? Sorry, but A part I I I I I. I. So, so, so we have uh, part A, the, the approval of the, the following policies. Mm -hmm. um, and we have three policies identified in part A. We have part B, uh, 
rescinding uh, the following policies, and we have uh, seven policies identified in that in Part B, and we have Part C, uh, the definition revision, uh, uh, and that's 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 one thing. So you wished to have a separate vote on what? Uh, I'd like you to have a separate vote on the components of A. On, on each of the three policies identified under Part A. Uh, just specifically, give me one moment, I'll figure out which one it is. Well, we might as well well take the, take take A in three parts. In that case, it it is quite separable. So mm -hmm. yes, we we can I think do that. It may okay. take uh, Manager Guthrie a moment to to um, sort out how we're going to handle the vote. Mm -hmm. Manager Guthrie, uh, it will just take me a moment to populate the vote separately. And in the meantime, what I can do is go to Trustee Boothby for wrap up. I'd like to keep talking for a moment, if I may. Oh, you would. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, then. Um, I'm intending to vote against uh, policy 125.sco because I cannot agree with clause 5.16. And I think it's important to put that in the minutes of this vote. That's all. Thank you, Trustee Lyra. And are there any other speakers to the main motion? And since now there are no other speakers, I will go to Trustee Bisbee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm going to keep it brief. We've talked about these policies a lot over five or six meetings. Um, I think we've done a really good job getting them to a place where they are um, easy to operationalize for staff and they do a good job cleaning up policies that we had, um, numerous policies that we had that needed to be consolidated. So I thank um, our policy team and uh, Superintendent Farish for her really good work on these policies and consolidating them and the year plus work that she spent with consultations, et cetera. Uh, so I'd urge my, uh, colleagues to vote in favor of the policies that are much needed. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Boothby. And I think all of us will echo your appreciation of the very large amount of work uh, that went into, into these, these revisions by our staff, as well as the considerable input from our advisory committees and from members of the public. So I will go to Manager Guthrie to ask if it has been possible to set up a three-part vote on Part A. Through you, Madam Chair, yes, I have um, a couple of parts ready to open. Very good. If you could please display those on the screen, if, if you're ready. So, so what we've got then is that P.125 school district.sco school district code of conduct attached as appendix A to report 22-017 be approved as amended. And that is up in your e-scribe uh, and ready for us to vote. And the motion is carried, uh, 10 in favor, one opposed. And if we can then deal with the next of the three policies in Part A.
that policy p.032.sco safe schools managing student behavior attached as appendix B to report 22-017 be approved as amended. And the policy uh, P.032 is approved, 11 in favor and none opposed. And on the third of these policies that P.145.SCO, Safe Schools Emergency Preparedness and Response, attached as Appendix C to Report 22-017, be approved as amended. And policy p.145.sco is also approved, 11 in favor, none opposed. And now we're into what was part B of the motion that the following policies be rescinded. P.043.SCO, police involvement in schools. P.033.SCO, smoking and vaping on board premises. P.104.SCO, student dress code. P.034.SCO, substance abuse. P.040.SCO, withdrawal of transport privileges. P.011.SCO, emergency school evacuations, school closings. And P.092.SCO, crisis prevention, intervention, and response. And the rescission of those policies is carried unanimously. 11 in favor and none opposed. And we have just one more part to go. That the definition of sexual or gender-based harassment in policy P.147.1 GOV human rights be revised to duplicate the definition as inserted in p.125.sco school district code of conduct. And again, this, this uh, motion is carried. 11 in favor and none opposed. And thank you very much, Manager Guthrie, for managing our multi-part vote. Moving on with our agenda then, that brings us to receipt of the Committee of the Whole report from the 12th of April, Vice Chair Penny. Hello, Madam Chair, uh, I'd like to uh, all for receipt of the Committee of the Whole Report of April the 12th, 2022. Do we have a seconder for that? 
Trustee Huff, thank you. Are there any errors or omissions in this report? Seeing none then, I will call the question on receipt. All those in favor of receiving the report? And those opposed? And the report is received. Trustee Penny? Yes, Madam Chair. On a motion by Trustee Campbell, which I will second, um, that, uh, and this is uh, first one of the recommendations from the Committee of the Whole Report, that an increase in the EDP daily rate to 2350 and an increase in the full day fee rate on an optional days of care to $38 be approved commencing September, 2022, subject to further discussions with the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Is this a consent item? If it is not consent, please raise your hand. And I am seeing that it is a consent item. Let's see whether the other recommendation is also consent. Trustee Penny. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And this is a second item from the Committee of the Whole Report on a motion by Trustee Campbell, which I will second, that part A, that the proposed revised policy P.100.IT, appropriate use of information technology attached as Appendix A to report 22-005 be approved, and part B, that policy P.049.IT Electronic Communication Systems be rescinded. Thank you. And I will ask if this is a consent item. If it is not, please raise your hand. And I am seeing no hands raised. So without objection, we can take the vote on both of these recommendations uh, at the same time. And I will ask if Manager Guthrie can set, it, set up the vote. Through you, Madam Chair, and for the rest of the trustees, just so you're aware, what you'll see on the screen is kind of a, a combination of the two motions, which, of course, will display in the minutes separately and as recorded uh, through the vote. Thank you. Madam Chair, point of order. Uh, is that Trustee Fisher? Yeah, it is. I'm just looking at eScribe. If you want to vote potentially no for one and yes for the other, it doesn't really give me a choice now. It doesn't, but but there was a, there was an opportunity to ask to, to vote on the two 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 different things separately. And no one made that request, but you can ask to have them voted on separately if, if you do not wish to support them all. Thanks, Madam Chair. That's my fault. And we have a result. So both of these motions uh, have been approved, 11 in favor and none opposed. Madam Chair, uh, may I just make one small remark? Please, please go ahead, Trustee Penny. I, uh, I erred in uh, uh, telling the board that uh, the uh, approval of policy P100 was moved by Trustee Campbell when in fact, I think it was Trustee Blackburn. So. We'll make sure that that uh, the motion is attributed correctly to Trustee Blackburn uh, in the minutes from tonight. Thank you very much for 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 um, noting that. And we have no non-consent items, so that brings us to item 12.3 on our agenda, report 
three, four selection process and committees, senior staff vacancies. Madam Director. Thank you, as for you, Chair. Uh, so the report does outline that um, due to um, retirements as well as some reorganization, um, we are in a position to um, uh, be recruiting uh, three, um, th recruiting four, three positions uh, on the um, senior team. Um, and they are outlined um, in the uh, body of the uh, report that's before you. Um, the three positions are Associate Director of Business Operations, uh, information technology um, and digital uh, transformation executive officer uh, also uh, and we put in um, chief information tech officer uh, simply because that's the um, industry language uh, but in our district uh, it will be named differently uh, and superintendent of people culture and leadership uh, which will have a significant uh, component of the human resources uh, role and it's described there um, in the report um, for for consideration here tonight uh, for trustees um, is that a part of the selection process will involve the establishment of a selection committee um, in accordance with policy p.087.8.hr uh, and uh, it is uh, there is a, uh, a two-part uh, so uh, structure to the selection committees. Uh, a part A is the um, the board component, and part B is the senior staff component. Uh, we do anticipate um, proceeding with the process uh, of recruitment, uh, which has already started with the posting of these positions, um, and we anticipate uh, going into the selection uh, component of the process at the end of May, um, at, and the, or the beginning of. June uh, at the latest with a goal towards uh, completing this process by the end of June um, to final report to the board uh, in the board meeting in June. Uh, and so to that end, um, we are bringing this forward to um, trustees this evening for uh, the construction of the uh, part A piece, which is the three members of the board, um, which will in all cases include the chair um, or a designated and two other trustees as selected by the board. Uh, so we will put that back over to you, Chair Scott, uh, to organize. And we do have uh, Executive Officer Giroux and uh, Human Resources Superintendent uh, McCoy, who will assist us with um, uh, any components of that selection that are required. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And I would uh, remind remind trustees that the role on this committee is as uh, is uh, to act in an advisory committee or in an advisory capacity, uh, given that it is the director's purview to, to uh, choose her staff. Um, with three committees, um, for each one of those, there will probably be a significant time commitment depending on how many interviews need to be conducted. Uh, generally, these are daytime commitments, uh, which I know makes it very challenging for some of our, our board members uh, to do. Um, and I'm wondering whether um, we want to try to uh, find find uh, trustees to serve on each of the three committees, or and and if it, given that there's always the possibility that something will interfere with somebody's ability to to attend all of the uh, sessions, uh, you, because you can't really do just part and not all uh, in each of these processes. I'm wondering if uh, staff have any particular advice on how to proceed with with the choices. Um, Chair, my suggestion uh, is that at this point you elect up to six uh, representatives and we don't think about it in terms of assigning them to a particular committee, given that we don't have dates for the meetings yet and can't um, be specific about that, that would allow for the most flexibility with scheduling um, and interests and so it might be easier to work um, with the elected group and sort out some of the details rather than navigate all of that this evening. And it would also be possible for a trustee to, to serve on more than one committee if, if, uh, that, if there is the interest, if they are interested in doing so, and if there is a need 
for them to do so because other trustees are not, not available. So um, I, I will ask if there are any nominations or volunteers, self-nominations uh, to serve at, on the uh, committees uh, associated with this uh, three-person selection process. Trustee Blackburn. I'd like to nominate Trustee Huff, please. And do we have a seconder for that? Trustee Jenkins, are you seconding that? Yes, I am. Thank you. Trustee Huff, would you be willing to share to, to take this on for at least one of the committees? Yes, I would, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have other nominations or self-nominations? Trustee Huff, your like hand is up. Yeah, I'd like to nominate Trustee Blackburn. And do we have a seconder for that? Trustee Jenkins will second that. And Trustee Blackburn, would you be um, willing to take to accept the nomination? I'd be honored to serve if so selected, Madam Chair. And are there any other nominations? Trustee Penny? Madam Chair, uh, because I have a fair bit of time available and have served on suspension boards as well as expulsion boards. Um, I'd like to uh, volunteer to help out if I could. Thank you, Trustee Penny. Do we have a seconder for Trustee Penny? Trustee Jenkins will second that. Are there any other um, self nominations or nominations? If there are no other nominations, then it would be appropriate to um, move a motion to close nominations. If someone would care to do that. Trustee Lyra. I will move to close nominations. And a seconder for that motion. Trustee Boothby will second that. And I will call the question on the mo motion to close nominations. All those in favor? And opposed? And since we had a potential for six people and we have three, um, that means then that uh, trustees Huff, Blackburn and Penny are all acclaimed as uh, members of one or more of the um, committees associated with the uh, director's uh, selection process. So thank you very much for allowing your names to stand. And uh, as the schedules get, get uh, sorted out, we will be um, looking to see who is available for which, which uh, committees at which times. Thank you all very much. Moving on then with excuse, our- Excuse me, Chair. Just, Trustee, uh, Trustee Ellis. Clear, yeah, just for clarification on this. Um, I, I believe that um, the, is it correct that once you start the process, um, you need to attend all of the meetings on these, uh, on this uh, as of the advisors? For, for that that has been our, our general practice and perhaps I could ask staff to clarify the reason for that. Thank you through you chair. Um, yes, uh, good, the, it is uh, indeed the case uh, trustee Ellis uh, that um, where we have had situations where um, a trustee has not been able to uh, participate fully in all aspects um, of the um, uh, the process we have not replaced that trustee for the process. So only those um, who have been a part of the full process um, are able to engage in uh, the advisory role uh, there so that is the expectation. 
Does that clarify your question, uh, Trustee Ellis? Yeah, so there wouldn't be someone else. If some, if one of the participants on it's not able to, to um, miss us a meeting or something, then we don't replace them with that someone is else. Correct. And can, can participants um, miss a meeting and then come to subsequent meetings or they have to, or is it the intent that the people should be there for the entirety of the interviews? Uh, so what we've tried to do uh, through you, Chair, what we've tried to do is maintain that consistency. And to do that, we've tried to structure it so that we don't um, obscure the process. So, for example, if um, a uh, trustee participant was unable to be uh, a part of the uh, part A uh, of this of the session, then they wouldn't be um, they would essentially not be, I mean, be coming forward for part B. So shortlisting and then interview. Uh, we try to keep the interviews together. Uh, so that we don't have the situation of someone being there for day one of interviews and not there for day two of interviews. Although we do recognize that um, that could happen. Uh, it's certainly, um, we, after the fact, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, um, but we certainly would not be replacing someone midstream. Uh, so the endeavor, uh, Trustee Ellis, is, and the expectation is that um, participants participate through the, um, the full process. Thank you for that clarification. It's helpful. Okay. Trustee Boothby. Uh, yes, further to Trustee Ellis's question, um, if we were to nominate a fourth or a fifth person to be on this committee, could the fourth or the fifth person be there for the whole time for just one of the three positions? Absolutely, because really, what we what we need is th there. There will be three selection committees, and a trustee, if they can only serve on one of the three selection committees, then we would put them on that selection committee. If they can serve on more than one of the three selection committees, they might end up serving on two or even three of the selection committees, but certainly a trustee could could be committed and only serve on one of the committees. Okay, thank you for that. Um, given that, I, I'd actually like to uh, nominate trustee Ellis as a fourth, if he would be willing to uh, do that. That put, puts us into an interesting procedural I'm, question. I'm not, I'm not interested, so okay. we don't need to go down that road <laughs> of procedure. I'm sorry to hear. I'm sorry to hear that you're not interested, Trust, Trustee Ellis. I would have loved to have had you. Uh, so, Trustee Boothby, anything further? No, thank you, Chair. Unless anybody else wants to self-nominate or nominate, thank you. And I think what we've got is is uh, three people who have expressed a willingness to participate in this process, and uh, we will. Um, I will work with the director around how the uh, three uh, committees will be set up and depending on people's availability and what the dates are. So if there is nothing else relating to this particular item, we will move on to the matters for discussion report from OPSPA representatives if required. Do we have an OPSPA report this evening? Not this evening, Chair, no OPSPA report, thank you. And if any ministry updates that we haven't already heard about? Uh, thank you, through you, Chair, no, no ministry updates. And I remind trustees that we do have our board work plan attached to the agenda. Uh, we have managed some of the things on the work plan, uh, not necessarily all of them, but the ones that haven't been been accomplished yet are still still in the works for the most part. Uh, moving on then, uh, we have no matters for informa information. Is there any new business? And seeing no new business, I would like to say thank you, th thank you to everyone for your uh, work and and um, support for for uh, getting us through our meeting this evening. And uh, I wish everyone a very good evening. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>